Welcome back to episode three of the How to Film Skiing Masterclass. In this video, we're gonna walk through everything you need to know about filming skiing on a gimbal. Let's dive in. In the past couple episodes, we've covered a lot already. How to film skiing in the backcountry, all of the equipment that I use, and today we're zeroing in on one of the most revolutionary ski filmmaking tools, the gimbal. I'm gonna walk you through a few things about the gimbal that can really make your life easier once you're on the slopes. So let's start with the basics. What is a gimbal and why is it a must have for filming skiing? The gimbal allows you to create fluid movement in your shots. So by getting rid of all the shakes and the bumps, this can really help elevate the production of your ski film. So I have the Weeble S gimbal here. I love this gimbal because it's compact and it's really rugged. I've dropped this down a mountain dozens of times. I don't really protect this thing very well. So as you can see, it's got tape on it, things are broken, but it still works super well. It does everything I need it to, so I keep it around. I just fell though, <laughs> knocked things loose. Let's dive into quickly how to balance it. There's a lot of videos out there that will walk you through everything you'll need to know about balancing a gimbal. So I might breeze over some sections. So if you have any questions, either drop a comment below or go check out any of the other videos on YouTube and they'll teach you just fine. You put this plate on the bottom of your camera. I take that plate and I line it up with the gimbal. You then attach it to the gimbal and you screw this piece in. You'll notice that it doesn't really balance right away. So you have to change the X, Y, and Z axis. Axes? I don't know. So you can tell it's not really balanced. If it's balanced, it'll sit perfectly here. Let's do that real quick. Okay. You can tell you successfully balanced the gimbal when you can move your camera to a certain position and it stays in that exact position. It will also stay steady when I want it to stay steady. All right. Now they have a basic understanding of how these gimbals work. Let's take it out and put it to action. So we are at the ski resort. We have the athlete Tim here, and we're gonna be getting some shots on the gimbal. When you're skiing, you're typically moving pretty fast. There's a lot of bumps, there's varied terrain, and the gimbal can allow you to keep your shots steady. All right, so let's get a few shots, and then I'll walk you through some of my panning and tilting techniques when I'm filming on a gimbal. Let's keep going. So the two modes I normally like are the pan and tilt mode and then just the pan mode. When you're panning and tilting like this, I love getting some of the more dynamic movements, showing the sky and showing the snow first and then panning up or panning down. However, the more you do it, the more you'll realize that some axes can be thrown off because you're going downhill, you're dodging trees, things can get a little bit wonky. So to keep things even more simple, you can avoid the pan and tilt mode if you're just trying to get a locked on follow cam shot by just doing the pan mode allows you to keep your subject in frame without complicating any of the movements. You'll see I'm on a snowboard today instead of on a ski. The reason is, is with a snowboard, you're facing the direction of your athlete. So this allows you to not have to turn as much depending on the shot list and depending what we're trying to get. I will sometimes be facing this direction. I'll sometimes be facing this direction. Sometimes I'll just be doing a traditional follow cam where Tim is in front of me, but I like to have the option of skiing and snowboarding because that can allow you to get different shots a little more comfortably. In addition to all of the gimbal shots you may be getting on the mountain, I think it's really important to capture the lifestyle of skiing as well. It's not just about the powdery downhill fast moving shots. Some of it is the lifestyle of sitting on the ski lift or going into the lodge or unpacking your boots from the car. But remember that in order to tell the best story, you need to have a clear beginning, middle and end. To do that, you need to capture all aspects of the process. I try to bring a few different lens options. I've been shooting on the 35 millimeter all day, which is great but I wanna get a little wider and a little closer to our athlete to showcase more of the landscape. A wide angle close to your subject is like the coolest shots I think you can get in skiing. So I like to make sure to change lenses every few runs to get varied looks while we're out here. I think the hardest part about filming skiing on a gimbal is trying to keep your subject in frame while you're moving fast. Having a wide angle lens can be a little bit more forgiving and a little more friendly in keeping your subject in the frame. Another thing to keep in mind when you're going downhill is that your x-axis of your gimbal may start to move. To counteract the rolling of the x-axis on your gimbal, you can use a button in one of the modes that will allow you to tilt the x-axis back to what it's supposed to be. So making sure that your x-axis is level, your horizon is level, and the steepness of the slope is similar to what it is in real life as it is on your camera. So I've been having a lot of technical difficulties today with the gimbal, and there are going to be challenges that come 
come up like technology in snow and you're skiing, of course it's not gonna go smoothly. But I think the key is to be patient, be forgiving, understand that you're not gonna nail it every time. That's an exercise I'm trying to do for myself right now because I feel like I am having to rebalance this gimbal all the time. Oh man! Dude, this is, I've never had it happen this bad or I have to rebalance this much. Once you get the shots you need, don't be afraid to play around, try different lenses, try different angles, try being closer or farther away from your subject. Because ultimately, when you go into the editing room and try to bring this all together, if you only have one type of shot, you really can't make an edit. Just get funky, try new things, and see what we can come up with. Putting your body on the line, dude, I love it. So we've covered a lot in today's episode. Some of the gimbal basics all the way to advanced techniques. Filming skiing is challenging and the way to get better is to go out and learn for yourself. I hope you learned something in this video. Stick around because in the next video we're going to be walking through pre-production. I love you. I'm proud of you. Have the best day ever. My mouth is show frozen. <laughs>